Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about data structures. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do software engineers who learn about popular algorithms and data structures think differently while solving a software engineering problem than ones who didn't? Yes. Yes, they do. Because they know more. Or they know of... Uh, well, it depends. It, uh, it, it very much depends here. So, this is a tricky one because when you know about different algorithms and data structures and how to apply them correctly, that's one part. The other part is that you need to be mature enough to know when to use them and when to fit them into a context and when you're sort of just playing around with them because it's fun to do stuff right it's sort of where it's sort of the same thing as if you teach your kids how to use you know matches or something like that uh, in order to make them able to start a campfire or you know start a cooking stove or something like that uh, if you don't make sure that they know that, that is the intention and that this is under the circumstances they are allowed to play with matches or use them uh, it might turn out that they think it's a really fun idea to you know start a fire on the couch or something like that so it's uh, it's this uh, ever th this internal problem between you give someone the tools and the means to work more effectively and having them understand how to apply those tools which is always an experience thing it's always the same thing um, and incidentally it's the same thing for junior software developers when they get into the industry where you learn all this theory and you sort of learn how to do things but uh, you haven't really had a chance to mature in your knowledge so you don't really know the correct way if that makes sense like when is one approach better than the other you sort of have to get some traction on your tires or like you you need to do some living so that you can do a little bit of experimentation and figure out what's going to work in what circumstance and so this is where the knowledge of data structures and algorithms becomes interesting to you because some I've worked with some software developers who are phil so-called philosopher programmers who are they're nerding out usually about concepts about is the, rather than trying to fo focus on solving problems and so what they do is that they just you know uh, they start they, they look at a problem and then they try to figure out which programming pattern or which el algorithm or data structure could I use to uh, to do this and that's not really how you should think about it, in my opinion. Because what happens in that scenario is that now you're going to try to find anything, any element of the problem that can overlap with one of those solutions. And then you're going to make the entire implementation or everything about creating that solution. Even though it might just be some coincidental, very minor thing that overlaps with one of these um, algorithms or data structures and then you actually end up with a worse solution and this is where in my opinion a true master level programmer is known because a true master will know that usually it's better to think about things the other way around where you look at the problem and you start thinking about okay what would be the perfect solution to this and then you try to imagine what the, uh, you use your creativity to figure out a solution and then it might be that you realize that hey like you, you go about the other way you, you realize that hey uh, actually you know what this thing here is pretty much the same thing as one of these data structures that I know about or one of these algorithms or so forth and so forth and you know what actually if I could tweak this thing a little bit, it's not exactly like a textbook implementation of that, uh, you know, whatever structure I have, right? But it's very similar, and a lot of the same elements are there. So maybe if I just borrow a little bit from that structure, or in some cases, it might be a copy paste solution, right? Uh, with some tweaks. Uh, then you're always going to be sure, if you go about it that way, that you pick, 
you, that, that you, you sort of stay honest with yourself because that is, as I said, that's the worst thing a software developer makes or the worst decision software developers make is that they they make the coding about themselves and they make the coding about, you know, making uh, code that they feel is worthy of whatever standards that they f feel are appropriate or doing things in a completely different and new way even though it's not really necessary they over engineer things or they make things very complicated but uh, and when they do and when they mature they realize that all these sophisticated advanced solutions they're really fun to th read about and so forth but it's actually really rare that you need exactly that solution and you can never make that mistake that you that you like can't really admit to yourself that you're trying to use this thing because you think it's fun to use it rather than that it's good for the problem because then you're actually creating a really bad implementation even though you're using quote unquote like a design pattern or like a thing like that and so by but but knowing about this stuff is very very powerful because it makes you more well it makes you more intelligent more knowledgeable it gives you more mental tools to access when you're going to solve problems but it's on you to be able to find the wisdom in these patterns and understand when a complete copy paste implementation of a data structure or design pattern is the way to go or when you might have to make your own thing but you can be inspired by the approaches or like the underlying wisdom in these sorts of algorithms and data structures. So what I want you to take away from this is that yes, software developers who know who data structures and algorithms think differently than those who do not because they have more information and that is the key thing. If you know more you are automatically able to think about things uh, in a different way. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're smarter than other people or so forth, it's just that you have more knowledge available to you. And I mean, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me that more knowledge is always better. In a perfect world, we would all know everything about everything and then we would have perfect clarity when we communicated or, you know, so forth and so forth. But uh, I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that if you know, uh, if you know one thing and I know three things, then I have thought uh, thoughts available to me that will not be available to you and vice versa of course and so forth so it's really good in general i think once you have stabilized in your overall hands-on knowledge in coding and stuff like that to make sure that you don't stop there to make sure that you start thinking reading up on different patterns and architectures and things like that because that is the stuff that is much more advanced and that's the sort of stuff that becomes more relevant the more advanced systems and advanced projects you work on uh, in the early days it's not super 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 important apart from like coding interviews and stuff like that but I promise you if you want to do really like complex stuff uh, a lot of that uh, knowledge all that theory is actually very useful for something and it's just that for low end or like mid level uh, coding it might not be the first and most important thing but that does not mean that you should skip it completely because it does have a lot of value to you have a great day